Thomas. Mr. Quasi Thomas. Mr. Quasi Thomas. Keep it going, guys. Alex Brown, Luke Perry. The man with one eye gets a pass. Uh, thanks for coming out, guys. My name is Quasi Thomas. I'm originally from Montreal, Quebec. Anybody here ever been there? Or so you guys, you guys know it's a city where no means maybe, <laughs> but not, not in an illegal way. Like we're, it's a very, it's a very loose, yeah, like it's a morally open city. Is all I'm saying. Like one time I asked this lady for the, for like what time it was. We were in the subway. She's like, uh, I don't wear a watch, but I haven't been late in hours. Let's go. Like that's where I'm from. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. And like, and I live out in Vancouver now. Vancouver's home now. Uh, Vancouver is where my DVDs are, so it's home. Uh, Vancouver, Vancouver is the last place I went split skis on an abortion, so it's home. I was, I was playing. You I paid for the whole thing, man. I knew what I was getting into. Uh, people always ask me a very obvious question: Why I would leave Montreal for Vancouver? Right? Why I would leave the land of milk and honey for the land of? Like almond milk and agave syrup, or whatever the fuck you guys put in your coffee these days. Uh, and there's two major reasons. Reason number one, um, when I was doing a little bit of research to find out if Vancouver was the place for me, uh, word on the street was there was like next to no black people in Vancouver. So I was like, wicked! Go out there and become president of black people. Get it on the ground floor. And since my arrival, we've uh, successfully grown to seven, so you're all welcome. And uh, reason number two, always a little embarrassing, but uh, you guys know the story about someone moving across the world or moving across the country to be with somebody? Um, I moved across the country to be away from somebody. Shit was real. I got off the plane, I put my back to the Pacific Ocean to make sure I couldn't be any further away. I was like, I fucking hate ya! I'm a little messed up relationship-wise, and it's messy, it's, it's, it's a little tricky, because I'm, I'm 33 years old and I don't want to be in a relationship, which is a tricky way to be, because it's all around me. At 33, it's like, it's like all my friends, it's everywhere I go, you know, I'm at that age where all my friends are getting divorced. What am I supposed to do? I'm, I'm serious, I've been in like five divorces last summer, I am fresh out of my told you so's. <laughs> The other hot thing that's going on right now, all my friends, uh, all my friends that are still coupled up, they only want to hang out with Quace. They only want to hang out with single Quace when they got some new couple shit that they want to show off. Right? Like uh, a really good friend of mine, Brett. Uh, he's one of the first guys I met when I moved out here. We just hung out day after day after day. Me and Brett. Nine side of a little gay, but we're having a good time. Um, and uh, and he met a wonderful young lady, and they fell in love. And guys, what happens when your homeboy falls in love? You never see him the fuck again. Like, which is fine, which is fine. But a couple weeks ago, Brett calls me up. He's like, hey, wait, you should come over. We should hang. So I'm thinking, wicked, get to hang out with Brett, smoke some weed, whatever, you know. But that wasn't the case. Basically, uh, him and his girl, they, they just bought a house. And they wanted me to come over to get the tour. You guys know the tour? The all important, all validating tour? Because it's not enough that you can afford property in British Columbia. You gotta rub it in the face of the one motherfucker you know who can't. And apparently, when someone else buys a new home, you're the one that forgets what the basic layout of a house is. You know, you got one grown man looking at another grown man like, well... <laughs> That's the bathroom! Oh my god, Brett, really? With the toilet bowl and everything? Man, maybe I should move in with my next girlfriend so I can stop taking shits in the kitchen. <laughs> what else is going on? Yeah, all my friends, uh, my friends are popping, uh, popping out the babies now. Like I became honorary uncle to like 87 kids last year. <laughs> right? And it's like, well, no matter what comes out of my mouth next, my views on having children are very much to each their own. Like, go with God. But straight up, for me, I just, I just don't want to have kids. It's just not my. I don't think it's my path. Half you guys looking at me like, that's a fucking option? Like, yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you know? Um, but for me, having a kid is like having a yacht. You know, like, I don't want either unless I'm so fucking rich that I won't recognize the financial damage it's causing me. <laughs> or someone surprises me with one. <laughs> In both cases, the, the reaction would be like, oh, fuck, you shouldn't have. <laughs> Anybody here have that friend, or maybe you're that person who just had a baby walking around like you changed the damn world? I got news for you, you ain't done shit yet. It's not game over. You don't get points for doing something your body was specifically designed to do. 
People walking around like, oh my god, look what I did. Go fuck yourself. You have that shit. <laughs> Give me one of these for me. You know? I'm not talking about raising kids. Raising children is difficult. You get a kid from 0 to 18 and they're not a serial cyber bully or whatever the worst thing is now. <laughs> that shit's impossible, right? Where you don't get five points for just popping it. You don't get you don't get a congratulations from me for doing something that teenagers do by mistake in Chilliwack all the fucking time. <laughs> Aim higher, I say. <laughs> Contribute to this world yourself, I say. No, don't just pass that responsibility on to a little baby. Only get, right? Only get disappointed with that baby when he tries to make a career out of being hilarious. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you ask me though, the only baby alive right now worth being the parent of, and I literally mean financially worth, is, uh, is Connor McDavid. You guys know who that is? Alright, for those of you who don't, it's as simple as this. Every year we get a brand new Wayne Gretzky. And this year it's Connor McDavid. Now I found out that Mr. Connor McDavid wears the number 97 on his jersey because that is the year that he was born! 97? Guys, 97, that was, a, that was a no birth year. Think about it, 1997, that's three years after this is how we do it. <laughs> Nothing should be taken seriously if it's younger than this is how we do it. 1997, guys, that's when Puffy was high. How are you going to put that much responsibility and that much pressure on someone who can't remember the Puffy era? Like, if you can't close your eyes and vividly remember the more Money, more Problems video, and you don't have the necessary brain candy to leave the house, let alone play in the NHL. If you're looking at me like, I don't remember the Puffy era either. What, what is the Puffy? Is that a feeling? Like, I woke up, I woke up being a Puffy this morning. If you guys are looking at me like you don't remember the Puffy era, then chances are you were conceived to it. Right? Go, go home and ask your 37-year-old parents about I'm fucking you tonight. That shit was me. Anyways, you guys have been fantastic. My name is Chris Thompson.